Good morning, Austin, and welcome to the Atheist Experience. We just like that song a lot, and uh, it definitely <laughs> gives you food for thought there, doesn't it? Uh, we are live. This is May 23rd. Welcome to the show. Uh, my name is Ray Blevins. This is... Uh, Jeff D. Jeff D. No, I was, re I was reading the sign. I'm sorry, Jeff. Oh, we're getting, yeah, I, I, we're I'm getting, getting, I'm, getting the floor. I'm trying to talk and read at the same time, and I didn't mean to be rude to my co-host here. And today's guest is Arlo Pignotti, and I've been informed that our original guest has arrived. Cool. At, uh, so you can uh, take turns. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I'd, I, I mean, I'll I'd be happy to switch. I, I'll, do, I'll just do, I'll do the sound effects as always. You yeah. sure? I, I'm That's sorry about job. that. No, That's no what, problem. Okay. Arlo Pignotti is our sound guy, and he does a great job of that, and uh, we appreciate him doing a stand in there. Thanks, Arlo, guy. for volunteering to stand yeah. in. But uh, That's right. <laughs> your services are no longer required. But because I'm the sound guy, I mean, I can interrupt any time I want. Yeah, so that's, that's true. true. <laughs> here you go. All right. Thanks. This is Kim Smith. Hi, guys. All right. Slide Hi, on in here once you, yeah. You look great this morning. Thank you. And uh, it's nice to have, uh, let them know we have good-looking women in the group, yes. <laughs> and, uh. All right, uh, she's also our, our, our oh, he, he's wanting you to hide the cord or move it up closer there. Okay, thank you. And, uh, uh, she also handles, uh, like, our PR. Uh, media relations. Media relations for the group. Uh, and I usually start out with announcements for the group. Uh, we meet at the Hot Jumble Bakery, at, which is West, West 5th and Lavaca. And with all the one ways there, I've been pointed out, how hard, it's between Guadalupe and... Lavaca on 5th and with the one ways you have to do some planning to figure out where to park and everything else but it's worth the trip down there it, you, you can meet us and it's at 10 30 uh, every Sunday and you and you also meet uh, other guests from the show beside and uh, uh, first Sunday of every month we also do a lecture series and next June 6th is our next lecture series and that is Howard Thompson mm -hmm. Uh, he has his uh, own uh, newsletter, electronic newsletter, called, what is it called? Texas Atheist, I think. Yes, I think that is the, uh, I think that and is. also that day, you're organizing a trip to uh, Dallas there uh, for the no Church of Free Thought there. You want? Yeah, we had guests on uh, a couple of months ago from, from the North Texas Church of Free Thought, and uh, and that was interesting what they're doing up there, taking the form of a church and, and offering all of the, uh, the social support things that a church offers, but without any of the supernatural beliefs underneath it all. So uh, I'm uh, getting a group together to carpool up there and take a look at what they do, because we're interested in that. So anyone in the group that's like to go, uh, I'm not going to go, I'm going to be here for the show and the lecture series. but. Uh, Contact Jeff D. And, and if yeah, and contact me in person. This is another thing. I, I, I'll take this opportunity now. Um, uh, my computer uh, flipped out about a week ago when we had all those electrical storms, so it's in the shop, and that's why I'm no longer uh, participating in the mailing list. I know we're in the middle of a bunch of arguments there, and so you, you gun ownership advocates will just have to wait to <laughs> tear me a new one when uh, I get back with my computer. Uh, and, and for those of you who, are, it, who have uh, expressed an interest in going to the North Texas Church of Free Thought, I can no longer organize that over email. It's going to be like another month before I get my machine back, which is really bugging me. But anyway, contact me in person or uh, leave a message with the voicemail number and maybe Great come idea. pass yeah. it on to me if that's the only way you can get to me. Old-fashioned communication. Yes. The voicemail is 371-2911. That's the voicemail for the group but you can leave a message for Jeff D and he will get it. Uh, all right, uh, Kim, uh, is there uh, any news from, uh, that you'd like to share with the group that, uh, that we didn't? I don't, know if, I don't know if you guys have talked about it. Um, I don't know that it's news, but I was on the uh, website the other day and, and this, this young woman from uh, Columbine, Colorado, you know, after the tragedy, she wrote a poem. And it was very sweet and very heartfelt. And <laughs> at the end, it was, it was all about Jesus. But at the end, she made this point in her poem that um, that Jesus didn't save any of the children who died there no, because he's not welcome in school. That was the <laughs> ending of her poem. Oh, you're kidding. And it really disturbed me. And I thought, yes. you know, I don't personally have a belief, but if I did, I would hate to think that a God would be so cruel as to not save 
the children, and I mean, this, this poem was, it really it sort of wrenched your heart a bit. It was very, you know, yes, I heard them screaming, I heard them calling out to me, I couldn't save them because I'm not welcome at their school. And it just, it tore me up, and I thought, what a cruel person. <laughs> yeah. You know, what a cruel guy. Anyway, well, how, well, uh, explain to me how there can be a thing that a, an omnipotent being can't do. Makes no sense. Yeah. It, uh, but uh, that, that is so wild. Uh, uh, there's so many facets to that whole Kalman shooting there. Mm -hmm. it, uh, uh, and they, they keep bringing that up. And the most interesting argument I saw, uh, they was bringing this up through the hate crimes. And it, it makes sense when you follow out the logic there. Uh, if we had hate crimes in place, technically, because he shot that one black student, they could actually charge him more than for the shooting of the athlete. Because the athlete was not a protected mm -hmm. minority right. or whatever, and, uh, I, and so it uh, it just shows you how you know that we need to enforce the the laws that we have for violent be, uh, offenders mm -hmm. right now. We, uh, all violent, off, you know, if you shoot someone, it's murder no matter what, no matter if that person's black, Chinese, or an athlete or whatever. So mm -hmm. it, uh, you know what I'm in favor of? I'm not in favor so much of, of hate crimes le legislation, but I am in favor of relaxing the uh, the cruel and unusual unusual punishment for people that that commit hate crimes. You know, you you murder somebody for racial reasons. I think you should be tarred and feathered and dragged through downtown instead of just stuck in prison. I think I think that we should make more fun of those people and make them feel like total idiots more than we more than we do with regular murderers. <laughs> that's my <laughs> that's my moment of politics. <laughs> okay, no, it, uh, make them wear the scarlet letter kind of a thing, right? Yeah. Sure, I'm in out. favor of that. Yes. It, uh, People who are particularly stupid ought to be treated as if they're particularly stupid. Or a big stupid. S. <laughs> big S for stupid, yes. <laughs> it, uh, we are live. This is May 23rd, and I see we have a caller on the line, so let's try and say how the phones are working here this morning. Brett? Yeah. Good morning. Good morning. Hi, Brett. Brett. Is hey. This Brett, I know? Uh, no. Oh, I, I thought I recognized your voice for a minute. Okay. Well, uh -huh. well welcome to the show. Yeah. What it exactly is atheism? Uh, atheism is the lack of belief in uh, gods. Like you just believe in nothing? Like you believe in stuff that does not happen to be gods. Oh. Uh, you what? believe in all kinds of things. I mean, you couldn't operate if you didn't believe that, like, you know, stuff existed. But, uh, but, you do, but atheists do not believe in any gods. Were you in Ferris Bueller's Day Off? What? <laughs> Was I in Ferris Bueller's Day Off? <laughs> Like uh, not that I know of. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. Wait, wait. Are y'all going to hang up on me now? Well, you what? have a real question? You have anything no. else you'd like to say? <laughs> yeah. Are you Mr. Clean? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Hello? All right. Yeah. This is Mr. Clean. Who's that chick on the right? This is Kim Smith. Kim? Kim. S-K-I-M? No. All right. Goodbye, sir. Wait, yeah. wait, wait. What's her name? No. Goodbye. You have a great week there. Yeah. And, uh... So, what was I just saying about stupid people? <laughs> <laughs> yes, he, he gets the big S for the day there. That's our first call there. Uh, well, uh, you want to go to this news article? That uh, I, thought that, I, got, I, saw I got a bunch of little news tidbits. I, I, saw, start with I thought that one. this was interesting too, yes. Uh, this is apparently from the Statesman. Uh, lawmaker asks Army to prohibit Wiccan rituals. Georgia Representative Bob Barr asked top Army officials Tuesday to stop sanctioning the practice of witchcraft on military bases by, contend bases by contending it's a religion for some soldiers. The Republican fired off letters to Army Secretary Louis Caldera and Lieutenant General Leon Laporte, commander of Fort Hood in Killeen, after seeing a newspaper report about a Wiccan celebration of the vernal equinox by soldiers at Fort Hood. Barr said allowing such celebrations, quote, sets a dangerous precedent, unquote, that could lead to all sorts of bizarre practices being supported by the military under the rubric of religion. I, bizarre practices such as, you know, like uh, communion or... Uh, or baptism. Uh, yeah, or baptism <laughs> and all those. You mean those kinds of, those kinds of bizarre practices? Yeah, if you're, gonna, uh, if you're going to allow soldiers religious freedom, then you gotta allow them religious freedom. You can't say these are the these are the religions we're gonna we're gonna tolerate, and these are the religions you're not gonna tolerate. The only reason that those rituals don't seem bizarre to uh, to Bob Barr is because he's used to them. 
And you know, so this is this is just this is just utter nonsense. And it, and it brought up another excellent point there: uh, how much trouble government gets into when they try to define what is a religion and what is not. Well, yeah, I mean, there, I mean clearly he doesn't he doesn't care whether whether a thing is really a religion or not. What he cares is whether it is something that he approves of or not, yeah. and that's a completely different question. Um, and you know, it occurs to me that uh, as much as this is in fact not a Christian nation. We were, you know, this country was founded by deists who very carefully made sure that the government and the and the churches would be separate entities, and one would not have control of the other. If we have a Christian army, that has really serious implications for, uh, you know, the basic freedoms of those of us who are not Christians. I think even Muslims had to fight for years just to get their rights. Do they? Do are are the Muslims military? allowed to? Now, now they do have. Uh, I don't. I don't know if they have everything they they wish for and their rights to to practice religion. But uh, my father was Muslim. He he helped in the fight to to have them have the rights to do that, and it took about five years. Yeah, typical. But, but also uh, the the other thing I thought was interesting about that article, um, that ceremony pictures and everything it made the front page news. But it was like two months after the event. I I, I still I was, when I was looking, I was like. Why is this front page news? I mean, this happened two months ago. And so this guy would have never saw that if it hadn't made that front page news. And this guy probably would have never said anything at all about it. He, 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 rat, he rattled off faxes and... Well, sure, he's, a, he's an alarmist creep. But, yeah, yes. but um, you know, I, if, if we're going to have religious freedom in the army, then eventually, you know, people that are freaked out by uh, freedom to have religions other than Christianity are going to find out about it. <laughs> All right, uh, and then they're going to scream. I see we have a bunch of callers in here this morning. Here, yeah, uh, this was a good topic. Yes, and, uh, and let's go to Mike first. Uh, Mike. Hey, good morning, Ray. Good morning, Mike. Morning, Jeff. Morning, Mike. Uh, Jeff, I'm in the process of transferring back up to the Fort Worth area. You mentioned that uh, Church of Free Thought. Is that in the Metroplex? I'm not. And I'm not sure what you're talking about. I'm not transferring up to the Fort Worth no, area. No, I oh, am. Oh, you are. I, I am. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, I don't have all of the information right in front of me. Yeah, um, I'm heading back up there to this afternoon. But I'll be back next weekend. I'll give you guys a call. Maybe you'll have the address next weekend. Well, okay. What, um, uh, what we do know is that they only meet once a month. Yeah, they only they uh, they, service, they have excuse me. Yeah, they only Go have a, a a service a a church service on the first Sunday of every month. Uh -huh. Um. And so that'll be the sixth. Uh, this coming month. Um, and yeah, we'll get that information together and have it available. Well, Next weekend. Tell them to call a voicemail. Uh, Appreciate yeah. it, guys. All right. Bye. You have a great day. Yeah, yeah. give them that voicemail number. And uh, just remind our callers, our voicemail, 371-2911. If you have questions like this, call there, and we will have a friendly atheist get back to you with the info you need. Yes. And, uh, all right, let's go on down to Bill. Oh, sorry. Uh, Bill. Where do you practice your religion? Where? No, it's this guy again. What guy? <laughs> Uh, well, it sounds different. All right. <laughs> Where do we practice our religion? Atheism is not a religion. Uh, it is an absence of religion. I, uh, how come there's like a show about it then? Uh, because, you know, those of us that live this way, um, yeah, we have to put up with a lot of... Uh, Crap. Of, of, well, <laughs> that's a nice word for yeah. it. We have to put up with a lot of crap, and uh, and we would like to, people to have an opportunity. One, one, we'd like other atheists who are isolated and may not know that there are people who agree with them to know that we're out here. And two, we'd like to uh, let people have some idea of what it's like to try to get by in this world without being a church Cohen Bible believer. Are you trying to like change them from Christians to atheists? No, not really. We're uh, we're trying to put on a better face. Uh, a lot of people have a misconception. They they associate atheists with Satanists and everything else, and that we're evil, immoral people. And we like to put a you know a real face to atheists. Yeah, of course we would prefer if the if we were not in the minor minority. I mean that's true of of any group. But uh, we don't actively try to recruit people. What we do is when we have Christians call into the show, for example, or confront us on the street, then we'll defend our we'll defend our point of view. But we'd uh, also like to point out uh, that this is a secular nation. It was founded, you know, separation of church and state. The Christian right is so well organized, has so many TV shows. I mean, they, they have a whole, you know, Channel 11 is just one channel just entirely of Christian. So uh, we wanted to show the balance of what's out there, really. And I'd love to get your input too, Kim. Uh, well, 
I started watching the show over a year ago, and what I realized that the show helps do is um, provide information about atheism, helps to dispel some of the myths, and helps to show that we're just real, normal, everyday people who are not, you know, evil, horrible monsters who, you know, believe in the devil or something like that. And so, not just the show, but when you get together with the group afterwards, you know, on Sundays and this and that, you find that they're, they're just normal people, and it's nice to be able to have open dialogue with some people who, who have the same non-beliefs that you do. Hey, Kim. Yeah? What are you talking about? Okay, this All right. is guy. Bye. Hey, we we, we have other callers, man. We have a bunch. Of, we, uh, it looks like it's really, going to be a really good morning here. <laughs> we, <laughs> we, we got callers backed all the way up here. And, uh, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> it's going down to Tom. Hey, good morning, Ray. Good morning, Tom. How you doing? Fantastic. I was just thinking that you uh, are doing a disservice to your cause. Uh, first of all, I should say that I, I agree with you that um, I don't believe in conventional religion, right. but you're doing a disservice to your cause by by putting down others who do not believe in what you are saying. I, w I, I appreciate your point of view there, and uh, we've had other people express similar point of views, but we yeah uh, I we shouldn't have said a reactionist nitwit or whatever I said we, earlier, but uh, we try to avoid putting them down. And, uh, we we like to point out the fallacies and the inconsistencies and the inaccurate information that they're putting out there. Uh, like that day of prayer bull crap that they had. We, they had this big full page ad in USA Today saying our US motto is in God we trust and it's been there for 200 years. No, uh, that was not our motto when we first started. That was changed in 1955. And, see, and they put it out there as a fact and everybody thinking, yeah, we're a Christian nation. We are not a Christian nation. Yeah, I agree with you. We're a, we're a nation built on uh, uh, the belief in, in people should be able to believe in whatever they want to. So can you can you put, point at a specific example of how we put someone down so we can try to avoid that? Well, um, uh, when I first turned on your program, and I have I have to admit I I don't watch your program, but um, when I first turned it on, you. Uh, uh, somebody referred to you as Mr. Clean. Yeah. And he basically, he was, uh, he first started off, though, as um, disagreeing with your point of view. Right. And um, the person to your right, I don't know his name. This is Jeff D. This is my co host, right. Jeff yeah, D. Yeah, hi. Okay. Uh, he um, went on a kind of a diatribe. Uh, about uh, how that guy was really an idiot, and he was. <laughs> well, he... well, look, um, you know, if we get callers who are clearly not interested in what the show is about, they're just calling to to have airtime. You know, we put up with that for as long as it remains reasonable. And when they start just flipping out and asking goofy nonsense for just to stay on the air, then it's time to say goodbye. You know, and that's what we did. Wait a minute, I thought his original argument was whether you were in uh, Ferris Bueller's day off or not. Yeah, I don't yeah, know. That's, that's I started out by asking if, we, if I was in Ferris Bueller's day off. So we're not talking about a real serious caller here who needed to be treated real, you know, with real serious respect. And just if he wants to call back and ask us real questions, well, we'll be happy to talk with him. And just to remind the viewers, and I, I, maybe this, that caller was not a, a fan of KBJ Radio, but the KBJ Radio Morning Show gives all the regular callers nicknames, and my nickname is Mr. Clean. So I thought he was asking me if I was Mr. Clean, oh, and, that that and, and the correct answer is yes, I am Mr. Clean. So it, uh, okay, I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> the other thing is, you know, uh, we we don't like to cut people off here. We like to let people talk if they've got something to say. Uh, okay. But when we're, but when the lines are full and there are a million people waiting, I mean, the, they're all lit up right now, and uh, and somebody calls in and really doesn't have anything to contribute, it's time to move on. You know, please don't. Please don't bog us down with, with useless phone calls then. But we do appreciate your opinion. Uh, and like I said, we do have other callers. You got any other thing you'd like to say? No, thanks for listening to me. And uh, uh, maybe it was a misunderstanding. Thank All you. Right. Well, thank you. No, you're right. I was overly harsh earlier on this morning, and I don't and, know why that is. I apologize. And let's move on. Hope, uh, and please watch us again. And, you know, we're down here every Sunday morning. Uh, let's go on down to Paco. Uh, hey. Good morning. How's it doing? How you going? Fantastic. That, that's great. So, atheism believes that there's no God. 
That's the gen that uh, we prefer the the definition no beliefs on or about the supernatural and leave the definition to God to whoever is making the claim uh, to the their God. We don't even we hate even getting in the definition of what a God is because there's so many you know there's so many different definitions of what God really is. So if we go in and say assert the negative, then that adds credence to their argument. So we we don't like using that. Hey, how many atheists are on the Starship Enterprise? <laughs> That's a good question. Uh, I, I'm hoping in the year 2060. I'm I'm only familiar with the uh, with the with the original series, and in, on the original series, there was only one episode that referred to a particular earthly religion at all, and that was the one where they went to the Roman planet, and there turned out to be a parallel of Jesus happening there, and that's it. So, uh, if that's any indication, pretty much most of them were atheists. And I'm open in the year. Hello. Yeah, go ahead. Was that last guy that called in? Was he making fun of me? It I don't could know. have been. It, uh, I didn't like that. Okay. Hey, wait, 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 wait. Can I run my penis on your head? <laughs> yeah. See? <laughs> I think I'm about to call you a stupid uh, moron again, sir. But, uh, yes. We apologize for the previous apology. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Arlo. Uh, that's Arlo Pignati. He does a great job. Thank you, Arlo. Uh, let's go on down to Mike. Good morning, Mike. Mike? Oh, shoot. You cut him off? I haven't done that in weeks. Yes, I hit the wrong call, button. Call back, Mike. Call back, Mike. Oh. Thank you. Yeah, that, whoever's writing the phone is trying to weed out that one guy. <laughs> I am truly, I apologize, Mike. And, uh, I haven't done that in weeks and weeks. And, uh, and we're, we're getting the names of the other callers there. I see. I'm going to do have, some more news while we're waiting? Uh, we can. The callers seem to be coming in hot and heavy this well, morning. Okay, well, okay. Uh, let's just go to it then. Rick. Okay, let's go to... Rick, and hit the right buttons this time. Hi, uh, this is uh, Rick. How y'all doing? Fantastic. Hi, good. Look, I, actually, I'm a, uh, I'm a Christian, and I was just really interested in the position of atheists with respect to the, uh, the Ten Commandments uh -huh. uh, that are espoused in the Bible, as well, well as... First of all, define what your Ten, Commandment, Ten Commandments are, because there's several uh, suggestions in there as to what the Ten Commandments could be. Well, there's one, of course, the, uh, the, there's only one God, and thou shalt honor uh, that no, read, read the whole thing. Okay. Read the, uh, the whole thing. Uh, also, do, do we have any reference for that? Well, and there, uh, there are multiple sets of Ten Commandments in the Bible, and they don't, they're not all the same. Well, universally so, speaking, I think most people understand the, the general Ten Commandments that, that well, most people uh, talk about. How about, uh, uh, no, thou shalt no, not kill, well, thou shalt honor thy father and thy mother? No, no, let's stay with the first one that you brought up. This says, the, the original version is saying they brought it down there just for the Jews. It's saying say no, no other religion but just the Jews. It's brought forth just them and no other God. And see, the, the Americanized version that drops that whole part out there. And that's the part you're probably reading. And that's the mild point is read the whole thing. And, uh, you know, you don't understand what you, you I'm sorry, I'm getting, <laughs> getting, getting all time time getting, getting flustered. Getting <laughs> flustered because it just drives me nuts. You pick out what you think are the Ten Commandments, and it's it's not. And we have the Ten Commandments sitting down there on a, a monument that got? the Fraternal Order of Eagles Which has ones put are down these? there in our uh, state capitol. And again, they don't have the correct Ten Commandments down there. Well, can you just what what is your position with respect to Thou shalt honor uh, thy father and thy mother? Uh, if they if they earn it, it uh, if they deserve it, if if my father and mother go out and kill people and murder and rape children or whatever else, they're not going to get my respect and honor. And how about thou shalt not kill? Uh, now, do you mean kill or do you mean murder? Well, let's 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 break it down into two. Let's say uh, well, thou shalt no, not murder. No, no, I'm going to ask you to interpret code. your Bible for us right now. There's one word. What does that word mean? Does that word mean murder or does that word mean kill? Because 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 I have different opinions depending on what you're telling me that that commandment is commanding. Well, let's let's talk about your opinions with respect to both. What does it say? Uh, I'm not I'm not gonna argue every possible interpretation with you. If you can tell me what it means, I'll tell you what what my reaction is. If you can't tell me what it means, then my reaction is well, we oughtn't be putting up a bunch of rules that the believers can't even tell us what they mean on the walls of courthouses, for example. Are you opposed to murder as that term is defined under the criminal code of the state of Texas? Uh, yes. Okay. 
How about the, uh, how about thou shalt not uh, covet thy neighbor's wife? I'll tell you what, let me do one. How about uh, uh, remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy? Do you believe in that one? Absolutely. Uh, do you know that that's Saturday? <laughs> the Bible defines it as Saturday. Well, I, I think the, the imperative part of the uh, See, of that there is you go again. that you you have it. You have a day that you respect. You respect God, and you set aside things on that day, and you honor Him. So could and be if, if you were to choose that to be uh -huh. a Tuesday, a Friday, a Saturday, or Sunday, so you're so you're willing to play fast and loose with your Ten Commandments, which doesn't really make them commandments. It makes them, you know, advice suggestions. That you, think is neat. <laughs> uh, you know, you know, that, now setting this aside for a moment, are you familiar with Hammurabi's code? I am not. Hammurabi's code is way older than the Ten Commandments, goes into great detail, and of course some of those details I don't agree with, but the point is you can have either this, you know, this set of ten suggestions, which are clearly not commandments because you can't even specify exactly what they mean, or you can have an elaborate code which takes, it takes uh, offenses on a case-by-case -case basis, uh, takes into consideration the the, uh, the, uh, the the you know multiple factors, not just did somebody kill somebody, but why did they do it? Who did they kill? Uh, who says that they did it? What are you know what are the responsibilities of the people making the uh, accusation? It goes goes on in, in in great detail, pages and pages and pages of this stuff. If you're going to have a, a code of laws, that's the way to do it, not. Ten, you know, handy suggestions, most of which are just common sense. Okay. So I'm not terribly impressed by the Ten Commandments. I, I, I just I get the impression that, that you're being very defensive, and I'm not trying to, to pierce questions. I'm, I'm very interested in okay. what's your position. And I, let's, well, let's, uh, let me ask you this question: sure. What what is what is your position? And I ask you honestly: What is your position with respect to uh, the general saying that that thou should uh, love thy neighbor as thou loves thyself? Uh, that's a very basic tenet of uh, many and it, religions. It was, and, and around, what is your it was around long before Jesus, this person that supposedly existed, Jesus said, uh, Confucius said it long before Jesus did. Uh, agreed. So would, would that be in accordance with, uh, with your beliefs? Yeah. yeah I, we, have I, no, I, we have no objection to for good advice. But our standard of whether advice is good or not is what actually happens when you act that way. If you get a better life and a better world out of acting a certain way, that is the reason to act that way, not because some holy book says that. That's, that's really, I think, the difference between our take on ethics and morality and, and, and the, the religion-based take on ethics and morality. Okay, well, I can respect that. We, we of Thank course, you. can have a disagreement, but, uh, okay. but I appreciate your answers. All right. Thank you. You have a great week. May I, may I read something here? That sure, you can. Yeah, it's Arlo. a great reference to the Ten Commandments. It talks about the three sets of the Ten Commandments. Thank you. The first Ten Commandments is in Exodus 20. So Christians, get your pins and pencils out, and please, because it's good for you to know this. <laughs> I want to see this, too. The first, okay, first set of the Commandments, candy Exodus candy. 20. The second set of Commandments, Exodus 34. And the third is in Deuteronomy chapter 5. And they're all contradictory. Now, as a moral code, the commandments are defective. The first four have no moral value. The first three deal with relations to God, not man. Correct. The Bible God commanded the breaking of all the commandments, except those involving himself. Mm -hmm. He gave orders to steal, Exodus chapter 3, verse 21 through 2. Kill, Exodus mm -hmm. 32, verse 27. Uh, commit adultery, Jose, uh, chapter chapter one, verse two, and uh, incited the Jews to appreciate the property of their neighbors, Deuteronomy chapter twenty, verse ten through seventeen. And uh, there's uh, there's more here. If I may go on, or maybe I should just bring that up later. Uh, I I go ahead. Ed. Just a, yeah, a little bit more here. Sure, it's pretty interesting. Right uh, the first commandment reflects upon God as conceited. <laughs> The yes, second, that's what the point I was trying to make. Thank the you. The second prohibits the arts of painting, sculpture, and photography. The third <laughs> says that God is jealous. Jealousy is of vice. And that he visits the iniquity of the fathers upon children. A manifest injustice. The fourth establishing the Sabbath because God rested on the seventh day. First ten commandments or because he delivered his people on that day. The third ten commandments is broken by all but a few Jews. The fifth gives a selfish and false reason for honoring parents. And the tenth classes wives with asses and other chattels and recognizes slavery. 
Excellent. The Hebrew word translated servant means slave. Can and, I, fi can I? and finally, just oh. one more sentence here. Yeah. Sure. It's pretty interesting. Sorry. The Ten Commandments do not restrain wife, child, and slave beaters, religious prosecutors, liars, except in court, or tyrants. The dialogue needs debunking. Thank yeah. you. Where is that from, Arlo? And what are you reading from? from? This is from a wonderful reference to the Bible. It's called the Bible in Balance. I'm sure you've probably seen it. This was this was passed out at the uh, the bagel shop where we meet. Okay. And uh, it's it's uh, it's a great reference to all the parts in the Bible that Christians don't like to pay attention to. Thanks a lot, Arlo. All right, let's go on down to Jeff. Yeah. Hey. Good morning. How's it going? Your voice sounds familiar. Uh, yeah. Don't don't you hate those like really religious people? No. Don't, they don't get on your nerves? Well, yeah. Yeah. There's no between, between being mildly annoyed and hate. Oh, yeah. I don't hate them, but they just get on my nerves a lot. All right. I just want to tell them to shut up sometimes. All right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Anything else? How rude of you. Um, I don't think so. All right. You have a great week. All right. Thank you. All right. Let's go on down to Robert. Robert. Yeah, I was wondering, uh, what what kind of rules do you guys follow? If you have no, you know, Ten Commandments or, you know, the, stuff the like laws that. that are in place in my, by the government. You don't have any like personal uh, uh, rules you like to follow? Yeah, it, uh, uh, I don't believe in karma or anything else like that. But I, I I put out, I try to be the neighbor. I try to treat my neighbor like myself. Where you know, it, but that if you go by the golden rule, you don't need the Bible. To live by the golden rule there, or whatever else, but uh, and, you know I try to treat the rest of the world as I'd like to be treated myself. Okay. Oh, it's just one more thing. Sure. What does Kim do on this show? <laughs> and you're back again. Yeah. Uh, she, we have a guest host. I mean a guest host. We have a guest each week, and uh, Kim is a member of our group, and we uh, we like to have different members of our group on each week, so you can meet the different people. So in. it's always you two, and then a member of your group. Correct. Y'all are. Y'all are on every Sunday morning? Correct. 9 a.m. on Channel 16. To compete with church? Not to compete with church, no. Uh, to offer the alternative, a reasonable alternative. 15 or 10. I don't want to hear anything about dragging a penis or anything else. I think that's the same guy. Huh? Yeah, it's the same and guy. I could, I could hear him making plans here. Uh, we need caller ID back there. <laughs> yeah, caller. Yeah, we need caller ID. Yes. And and, and uh, but he did actually make a point, which is sure, you know right Kim's ahead. being quiet over there. If you want to jump in on any of these things, just go ahead and do it. I, and I, we'll try to actually uh, yeah. give you actually, opportunities here. I do want to jump into something sure, that happened right before. Ahead. The guy that called, I don't know if it was Thank Tom, you. and he was he was asking about our opinion of the Ten Commandments. But there's a, a it's like a, a question that should be before that. I don't even believe that the Bible is. Uh, What's the word I'm looking for? That it's it's uh, the rules Divinal. I'm supposed to follow, or divinely inspired, or you know, it's a wonderful collection of of fantastic stories that you know are uh, actually scary bedtime reading, I think, for a lot of little children. But yes. you know, I don't I don't have any basis for believing that that book is the the way I'm supposed to live, or or that it was written by not God, but people who are writing it for God. So, I, you know, there's more of a fundamental thing there. It's not what I think of the Ten Commandments. It's really what I think of the whole the, book of itself. Of the source, yes. Yeah. Yes. So Excellent I, point. Yeah, I'm sure where he was going with that was, you know, ultimately, well, you know, why why fight the the uh, the uh, religious fundamentalist attempt to take over this country? Because really, it's all based on just these completely reasonable set of rules, and well, you know, they're not that reasonable, and we don't believe that they're that they are the right rules because your God says so. And there's all kinds of arguments against that. I saw a commercial. I think it was yesterday, and I was just flipping through, and I saw this commercial. And um, when you first see the commercial, it's like a, maybe a 30-second spot, and the first 25 seconds, you're going, "Wow, it almost sounds like it's a commercial for something about atheism." And it's this this woman. It's just a set, and she, did you see it? So I, she's a I, woman. She comes out and she starts talking. She goes, "You want me to believe that there's a God and He did this and He did that and then He died and He was, re you know, He was, you know." And then it's like, the what if they're right at the end? It's, yeah, I it's did what say. if it's true? But what if it's true? That's right. <laughs> so for the first Pascal? 25 seconds, you're going, "Wow, this sounds like someone really knows what they're talking about." And she turns around. She goes, "You're crazy." And she walks away. And then it comes up. What if it's true? And it's for a Christian center here in town. Yes. Sure. Like, oh, let's get them. Let's get them that way. You know, <laughs> what if it's true? Yeah. What if all of reality is just an illusion and nothing is really <laughs> happening? I mean, if you're going to argue 
that because it is, there is a slim possibility that some wildly unlikely thing is actually the, the, the way it really is, that therefore you must seriously consider that, you must not only t take that possibility seriously, but actually believe it, well, that's just utter nonsense. <laughs> Let's take another call. <laughs> Just to remind you, everyone, uh, th this show is being brought to you by Atheist Community of Austin. Uh, we meet every Sunday down at the Hot Jumble Bakery once we're done here. So if, if you're waiting in line and you can't get through on the phone and you really got burning questions, you can come down and ask us in person. Let's go on down to... We need more callers for the Bible quiz. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Arlo. Uh, Tom. Hey, it's uh, me again. The guy that had a problem with your argument before. Uh -huh. Sure. Um, I, uh, why do you argue with the people who, who, for example, the uh, the person who is talking about the Ten Commandments and and how they are commandments? Why do you argue with them? Their 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 whole uh, prime mover is that, that God made the commandments. And if you don't believe in God, the prime mover, then um, the whole argument doesn't mean anything. Oh. And, and when you pull out a Bible and start arguing with them about a commandment, then uh, you're giving some credence to that argument. No. And it, uh, it's the, completely, the reason, uh, can, if I can may respond, the reason why we argue with those people is you know, we know where that's going. We've encountered that line of thought over and over and over again. We know that ultimately that, that person okay. is, is going to try uh, to say, you know, all these, these commandments are just you know, handy little rules. Therefore, there's no reason to object to them being used as a basis for our legal system. And we don't agree with that. And that's why we argue with it, because what they're, where they're heading with this line of reasoning is they want to establish that as the basis of our legal system. And, they and, oh, and, no, and the reason for the Bible, I can respond to this guy, so get her chance. No, I'm just, <laughs> uh, the reason we pull out a Bible is so we can show some of the reasoning behind our, uh, uh, behind our uh, decision that, that those are not justifiably used as the basis for our legal system. Uh, okay. Sorry about that. I, don't, I don't think it's argue. I think it's we're defending our our position. You know, Tom. A lot of times we get flack from, especially Christians, and it's more of a for some reason we feel the need to defend our position. You know, they don't just accept and and respect our point of view as we do theirs. You're free to believe whatever you choose to believe. That's fine with us. It's fine with me anyway. Um, so the argument thing, it's, I don't know that it's so much we're arguing, but when someone calls and they have an opinion that, that is different from ours, we're simply defending our point of view. So I, I don't think we're, we're up here to, to cause fights and argue with people. Um, but and then, like Jeff pointed out, if we, if we, if we can show uh, the, it, the inaccurate information that they're starting with, they're basing their whole faith on these, you know, these, little, these foundations here. And if we show them the foundations, how uh, how weak they are, how weak their foundations are, hopefully they'll they'll see the point. And, but uh, we try not. But I, I do get worked up over that because we have the Ten Commandments on a monument sitting right down in our state capitol. So I mean that, and we, we there's no point for it being there. And we and they're putting it in courthouses, and it's a big court battle. We're just wasting a lot of time and effort on that, and we just need to get rid of it. And, it's no place for it. Well, I understand your point of view, but um, the people who did come over here were were Christians. Not um, all of them. I understand that, but the the vast majority. So you, you're of the forgetting about all the Christians. You're only going to count the Christian history. You're not going. You're going to ignore everyone that's not part of the. That's basically what I don't know. Wait, how about the Indians who were here first now? Yeah. What, what about all that? What about Indians? the Indians who were here first? They're not Christians. I understand that. But the founding fathers of the United States were Christians. No, they no, were deists. Not, they, were deists. they were mostly deists, which means they did believe in some kind of an ultimate something that you can call a god, but they did not believe that Christianity was an accurate uh, representation of that god. Does that make sense? You can look this up historically, sir. This is this is this is just the truth. I uh, yeah, I thought that they were um, being persecuted in in yeah, Great you're Britain. You're confusing and the pilgrims with the founding fathers. The pilgrims were persecuted by uh, by differing religious groups, 
interestingly enough, it's Christians persecuting Christians. So you know that I mean there there's a problem right there. Right, uh, I understand but, that. But though yes, we had pilgrims come across to and and they were the first settlers. But when we're talking about the fun, uh, I'm getting a I'm getting a no from somebody behind the camera, and we'll get that information to you in just a second. But don't confuse those people <laughs> with the founding fathers, who were the guys who. Uh, you know, a hundred years later, we're deciding what our government was going to be like. See, it just shows you uh, how much influence the Christian right had. They, they've actually tainted your view of history because of uh, the, the Christian information that's being put out there. And Howard, what you got there for us? The pilgrims were not the first uh, Europeans here with the Spaniards. Okay. They and, came and they were Catholic, weren't they? And they, yeah, they were Catholic, and they settled. The first settlement was 1565 at St. Augustine. Florida. Okay. Very good. I, I could, I am, I'm sorry, I couldn't hear we'll, that. We'll, 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 yeah, he doesn't have we'll microphone, so Phil. He, 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 our, our, our Howard was pointing out that uh, the first settlers were, in fact, not the pilgrims. The first settlers were some Spaniards in 1565. 1565. St. Augustine, Florida. St. Augustine, Florida, and they were Catholics? They were from, yeah, they were from Spain, okay. which was a Catholic nation. Well, that's still, that's still a, var a variety of Christianity, so the well, well, that's is still, is still I mean, correct. Rich, you don't have to uh, I'm that's talking about the... Saying, uh, saying they were from, uh, yeah, get your historical uh, facts straight, I guess. Is okay, the point, uh, anything else? We have a bunch of other callers, too. But, no, so go I'm right ahead. Go ahead. All right, you have a great week. Thanks now. for calling. People do the same thing with physicists. If they even say the word God, they're Christian. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. All yeah. right, let's go on down to Jake. Yeah. Good morning. I'd like to say that from the beginning of the show, right. like I've been watching it, right. and y'all have turned me atheist. Thank you. Yeah. Hey, well, you gonna hang it's, up? Yeah. You've hung up on me like five times already. I know, because usually we try to keep the calls to one. I have a bunch of other calls here. But just pretend you don't know it's me. Okay. Well, you have a great week. Uh, uh, just pretend we didn't hang up on you. Yeah, just pretend. Just keep talking into that phone. Turn the sound down, and when we move our lips, you can pretend we're talking to you. <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> Which yeah, one's next? Accused of heresy on three counts. That was Jake. I just hung up on. Oh, All right, let's go on down to Drew. Hey guys, how y'all doing? Fantastic. Good. Hey, I just wanted to say that God loves you and Jesus died for your sins. Uh huh. Yeah. How, how wait, wait, wait. Know? I gotta, I gotta ask this question. Sure, go ahead. I, why, why do you care whether or not Jesus loves us, or we believe, or we're being saved, or we're going to hell? What, what is it to you? Do you somehow get a better place in heaven if you save more people? No, I, I, I don't care about that. I just said that God loves you. Then why can't you respect our point of view that, that we just don't happen to believe that, that, that there's a God? I respect that. Why do you have to throw it back in our face that Jesus loves us? We, uh, that means nothing to me. I don't believe there's a Jesus. I'm, I'm not throwing it back in your face. I'm just letting you know that after you get tired of this, that, that God's there for you. Because one day you will. What's his purpose? Tired of this, so uh, so so. I guess, what do you is think this is the point of a belief through? system, sir? Do you think the point of a belief uh, yeah. system is? What do you to, believe in? Huh? What do you believe in? Now, then let me ask my question. <laughs> what do you think the point of a belief system is? Do you think the point of a belief system is just like to hang around with like-minded people and just believe something in unison for for the fun of it? I mean, do you think that's what we're doing, or or do you think that a belief system that the point of a belief system is to you know, try to get a worldview that is the is the most accurate one you can get. That's our opinion. We're not in this. I mean, I, I'm tired every day of of fighting to maintain my sanity against an onslaught of religious nonsense. Okay, I'm tired of that every day. But I'm not going to give up uh, my my current understanding unless there is some evidence that I'm wrong. It has nothing to do with getting with getting tired out. It's not like you're going to wear us down if you keep saying Jesus loves us over and over and over again. It's not about that. Until you can show us that there is this God that you believe in and that all that the claims you're making mean anything at all and have any bearing on reality, until then we have no reason to change our point of view. And if you and if you check into historical facts there you'd find out that there's so little evidence that this person you call Jesus even existed. So it uh uh, you know, I, I think you need to research your Bible, your history, and yourself, and maybe you will get tired of your thing and come around to a reasonable, sane point of view. Yeah, and at the very least, don't try to wear down rationalists by making emotional appeals to them, because that completely misses the point. Yeah. Um, uh, what if you guys are wrong? 
uh, if, you know, just uh, worst case scenario, what if you're wrong? Uh, okay. What, what, it depends what kind of wrong you're talking. Because if you're saying, you know, what if we're wrong and the Bible is all literal, literally true, right? Well, then the universe is ruled by a being who, as depicted in that Bible, is a despicable tyrant that I couldn't, couldn't possibly worship in the first place. And I'll happily go wherever that being sends me because I won't have any choice and I'll just be shaking my fist in you know, retaliation the entire time for, what, for what, what little good that does me. Uh, that's one possibility. Um, did and we lose him? Yeah, it, I, I did not catch off. I don't know how we got cut off there, caller. Okay. But, uh, Call back it. if you have more questions. I'm done. Oh, okay. And, uh, that, yeah. uh, go ahead, Arlo. Well, I just want to say we can't forget all the other possibilities, all the other religions out there that say Christians are going to hell. Right. right. Yeah, what if the Mus Muslims are right? What if the Buddhists are right? You know, what yeah. if the... What if some, some tribe living in Africa that's long been wiped out was right, and now nobody knows what the truth is? <laughs> I, I, know, can't remember, I can't remember the pamphlet I saw which church it was, but uh, they were saying that all the rest of them are going to hell uh, because they were worshiping on Sunday instead of Saturday. Yeah. And, and they weren't Jews. They were, it was, uh, and why do, why do you even ask us these questions? We addressed that earlier in the show. I sat here and said, you know, if you, that just because something might, that might, there's a slim possibility something might be true, you have to not only seriously consider that it may be true, but also go as far as to believe that it's true, is utter nonsense. Why do you ask us these things? Right. Let's go on down to Greg. Hi. Good morning. Good morning. Um, I'm not from Austin, Texas. I'm visiting, actually, and I... Well, welcome to Austin. Thank you very much. And I happen to be... Um, passing through the television ch channel today. And uh, in, my, in the course of my life, I've always seen shows like Atheist Experience, and in Minneapolis, where I'm from, it's like an atheist movement kind of show or whatever. And I guess, I guess my, my, my question to all three of you guys is simply, um, it, 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 uh, it appears to be that this sh whole show is in reference to uh, Christianity and their uh, attempt to proselytize you on their religion but I guess my question is is this does the atheist experience come from a position of um, Christianity the Bible in itself needs to be re-looked at or is this an issue of there is no God I'm, I'm, I just want to be clear before uh, I... well it's a little bit about, but uh, the Christian right is so well organized politically active and everything right. else they've uh, tried to uh, uh, put their religion into our government, and we strongly against that. Mm -hmm. As long as they, if they were not out there uh, in our face every day, with you know, uh, or like the Jehovah's come knocking on your door and everything right. else, if they pr practice their religion in their church or in their home and left it out of our schools and uh, our government, we would not have any problem whatsoever with them, and we would we would never talk to them, and they never talk to us, and we'd be happy. Right. Well, I guess my coming from my experience being a black man in America, I know what our government, based on religion, has done to justify some of the many, many um, puritanical beliefs and just crap, to be honest. But I, I was born and raised in a Baptist church. My father's a Baptist minister. But during the course of my life, I'm 37 years old now, so the course of my life, I've studied everybody's religion and have come to one basic tenet, and that is everything that every human being does on this planet is based in two elements. The root of all elements is either love or fear. And if your life is based on fear, then your religion is ultimately not serving you, because I don't see it as being a right or a wrong, but given where you say you want to go, then that fear-based element is going to lead you nowhere. It's like you can travel as hard and fast and prophetize all you want, about trying to get a sunset, but if you're traveling east, you're not going to get it. So I'm not saying that you're right or wrong. I'm, I'm just saying that every human being listening to the show and you three guys, if, you dealing, if you're dealing with your life based in a position of love and love for all people, that's, ex, that's not exclusive. That's inclusive. And exclusivity and fear and trying to make you do something based on uh, fear of a... Of a um, God is going to strike you down or whatever like that. You're looking at God and you're looking at yourself, which is which is what you are. You are everybody is a little piece of that prime source and that higher power. I believe that if you if you look at yourself 
and look at your creativity, you will understand that you are made in God's image. And you can call it God, you can call it Melvin, whatever you want to call it, it doesn't really matter. But the bottom line is all of us are little gods creating every day and creating everything. So I have no problem with atheist, uh, atheist experience no more than I have a problem with Christianity experience. It's neither good nor bad, right or wrong. It is what you are, but you're creating every second. And I mean, if, if you guys are interested in any way, there's three books that I've read in the course of my life called Conversations with God. You can look, at, look into those and see what you find in that. But just like Christians, I would say to all Christians and Muslims and Jews and anybody else, look into other things before you make statements that, that could show you a, a greater light. The darker this world seems to get, the more light we all seem to need. So that's basically all I wanted to say to that. Okay, I, I appreciate your point of view, but it, uh, uh, I, I've come to the conclusion that uh, anybody in our group that has come to the to the point in their life where they're coming out and saying, "Yes, I'm an atheist. And I'm proud of it." I'm gonna, they they did not come to that overnight. It, it came through a long, thought out process, and uh, it you can't pinpoint like the Christian. We've made this discussion before. Uh, the Christians can point out some momentous, earth-shattering event that happened in their life. They said, "Yeah, I'm convinced God's love." Well, an atheist cannot point to one event that said, yeah, now I'm an atheist. It is through logic and research and uh, thinking and that brings us to the point. Wouldn't you agree, Kim? And I, well, I think a lot of the people in our group also started out from a Christian foundation. A lot of us grew up in homes. Myself, I grew up as a Methodist. Um, it, it took me six years to really finally um, come to the the realization that that my Christian upbringing was not something that I agreed with or believed in anymore and it was a long it was a struggle it really was it's not something that you know instantaneously I went gosh darn it I'm an atheist you yes. know you really you have to look inside yourself you have to look at other people you you do have to do some research and some reading and look at other points of view so you know it's yeah, that's an excellent point, because if you're a small child growing up and you're being told that uh, you'll go to hell for doing this or whatever, and then you get older and you think, well, maybe there is no hell, then you start, you know... You it, start it, questioning. It, yes. It, it, you just can't do that overnight. It takes a lot of thought. And yeah, I, I definitely agree with the caller that, that the you know before you form any conclusions about these things, you ought to look at a lot of different points of view. Mm -hmm. But... Uh, in another important way, I don't agree with the caller. Uh, to him, it seemed like the most important thing was uh, being inclusive, be involving everyone, um, you know, and not not uh, drawing lines between people on the basis of their beliefs. But it seems to me that if you if you make one huge inclusive group of everybody, and what they have in common is they all believe something that happens not to be true, well, that's not necessarily a good thing. Um, it, so, so there's a, there's a, there's another question here. It's not merely are you are you including people or excluding them. There's a question of you know is the thing you're including them in, them in or excluding them from, is that sensible? Is it accurate? Does it have any basis in reality? All right. Uh, I think we got a bunch of calls backed up here. Let's go on down to Dean. Yeah. Good morning, Dean. Good morning. How are you? Fantastic. Yeah, first of all, I'd like to say it's unfortunate that uh, your airways are being tied up by some really weird people this morning. Thank you. Um, <laughs> most of the time, your callers are pretty intelligent, and uh, the questions are really good, and it's interesting. Um, also, I'd like to tell Jeff that he's very well-spoken, and um, he does real well on the show. Thank you. Um, I think it was last Sunday a, a woman called in and said that uh, you should spend more time talking than uh, taking callers, which is wrong. I think it's good that you take callers. Thank um, you. So I've still got some news here we haven't gotten to yet. Yeah, the, yeah. the phones have been the just phones ringing been off the hook up. today. Yes. Yeah. Um, have you ever heard the song God by John Lennon? Uh, probably. God by John Lennon? Yeah. Um, the, first, the first line in it is, uh, God is a concept by which we measure our Yeah, things. yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, the reason why I bring that up is I was uh, brought up in a Christian home, and um, as as I you know matured and gotten older, I realized that it caused me a lot of guilt all throughout my life. Good point. Um, you know, 
I've always had that in the back of my mind that if I don't do what is written in the Bible or what has been taught to me, that I'm going to go to this bad place called hell. And people can't live their lives, you know, and be free and do what they want to do, always having that concept in the back of their mind. It's, well, it's a, well, it's they a bad can. Clear, clearly, they can. The question is whether it's a good idea. You know, right? Um, uh, you know, I, uh, I, I'm in the middle of a of a debate with my brother, who is sort of sliding off toward theism, and uh, and one of the points I made recently, after all of his talk about how you gotta have something to believe in, blah 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 blah, uh, is that uh, by all indications, I'm a happier guy than he is. You know, but right. he's but he's absolutely convinced that you can't be happy unless you uh, unless you uh, decide that you're going to believe in some cosmic thing that you can't prove. Right. Well, I think you know a lot of it with me is um, the finality in death. Um, yeah, it's a hard my, thing my, for I lost me. my father two years ago to brain cancer, and during that whole time when he was going through chemo and and that. Um, you know, look bad. Uh, of course, there's a lot of praying going on. The minister showed up. Um, families, you know, praying and this and that. And of course, it didn't do any good. I mean, the, the cancer ran its course and he passed away. But I guess there is some fear that I have about the finality of his death that he no longer exists at all. And yeah. some people will say, well, he still exists. You know, he, he sees you in heaven or wherever he's at still. And that's a good feeling. But, you know, it's just the fear of the finality. That's, I guess that's one part that keeps me walking that fence, you know, uh, right? to and whether give up the Christianity altogether or... Uh, no, that's a hard thing for the uh, human mind and ego to uh, think that, you know, that this is it, you know, that we're, we get these 70 some odd years here on this planet and then that, that's all there is. But uh, unfortunately, there's no evidence to prove that there's any, you know, uh, any afterlife whatsoever. Right. You know, my mom's a Christian, ahead, but she always says, we, we have this discussion <laughs> pretty much on a weekly basis now. Actually, I lent her a book, um, Dan Barker's, um, oh, come on, what's Moving the name of the book? Faith? Yes, that one. <clears throat> so I hope she reads it. Um, but anyway, we have this discussion, and, and we always talk about, you know, the afterlife and the finality of death. And though she, she is a Christian, she's not an atheist, she always says, well, no one's ever come back. And she's very right. You know, no one knows what's out there, what happens afterwards. And I think that a lot of Christianity is based on that real good feeling of there is something else afterwards. There's something more to look forward to because they don't want to believe that this might be it, you know. Right. And it, we, should, we, should, we should ask people that question from our point of view. Well, what if it's true that this is it? You know, what if it's true that this is it? This is all you get these if you're lucky 70-some years, you know. Yeah, if you're lucky, yeah. And you know, I sometimes I think, maybe, think well, that... Well, I guess if we live that way, we might live, um, you know, full lives day to day, I guess, if we think that way. Um, my best friend is a psychiatrist, and I met him through playing music. We're in a band together, but uh, he pretty much has taught me a lot about, uh, you know, being able to live a good, happy life without having the guilt of Christianity uh, all the time, which, you know, he's helped me quite a bit in thinking that way and to get rid of the guilt. So um, anyway, I really enjoy you guys' show, and I'll let you go so you can get on with some more callers. Fantastic. Oh, can I, can I, I say one thing in response to the, to the caller before? Yeah, go right ahead. I'm sorry. Oh yeah, uh, please. Uh, uh, if if you're interested, come down and and meet the gang at the Hot Jumble Jumbo Bagelry, Fifth and Lavaca at 10:30, right after the show. Okay. Um, you have a great week. Thanks. Have a good day. Yeah. The the one other thing I wanted to add to that is a, a lot of a lot of atheists that I know do attempt to deal with the the you know the finality of death by concentrating on, on having a good time while you're here and, and, and making a big deal about not being afraid because, you know, that's just the way it is. Uh, but another thing I like to point out is if you don't like the fact that human beings wear out and die in a maximum of like, what is 124 years so far, whatever the record is, if you don't like that, the sensible thing to do is not to go and give your money away to some huge organization that, <laughs> it, that, is, that is promising that you get to live forever only. They've got absolutely no evidence that that claim is true. The sensible thing to do is to support life ex scientific life extension research and ask yourself, why is it with all this, the, all this technology that we've got nowadays that so little effort is being put into figuring out why human bodies wear out and, and trying to counteract those problems. Excellent In point. In the meantime, uh, I just lost my grandmother last year, 
and hello, this is Vic. Hi, Vic. Oh, I was going I didn't recognize the voice at all. This I'm looking at Ray's face. He looks confused. I thought it was yeah. God for a second. Yeah, I thought, like, <laughs> grandmother? It's not Arlo. Oh, but go ahead. Grandmother God. Yeah. <laughs> go ahead, Vic. Okay. Anyway, I have a, a lifetime of memories of my grandmother, and they still exist with me. So I didn't really lose her, although she's not with us anymore. Um, I still have everything that she contributed to my life still in, still within me. So she's not really dead to me. Yeah, well, Excellent. but but she lost her, <laughs> and but, that's well, that, yeah, that's a real her, issue. Yeah, but it, 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 it also brings out the point. It, 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 the, I always find it fencing about the Christian religion is it, 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 the vanity. They actually think that the, this whole experience and this whole earth and everything else is here just for them. You know that they that it, they can do whatever they want with it. And uh, it's a gift from God, and they're going to heaven, and all that. it just—it's a very, very vain p position to take, if you ask me. All right, let's go on. To, let's see if this is the mic I maybe cut off earlier. Mike, hi guys. Is it? Are you the one I cut off earlier? Uh, no, I'm not. First oh, time call. I want to apologize to that mic. I hope he does call <laughs> in again. Okay, go ahead, Mike. I just wanted to respond to the person who called in to say that uh, Jesus loves you. Uh, sure. He apparently hasn't read the Bible because uh, Jesus also commands believers to slay non-believers. Yeah, and thank so you. If Jesus loves us, why do you think we should be killed? Yeah, yeah. good point. Yeah, we, we did a lot on that one last week. Yeah, and that sort of ties in also to the Ten Commandments, thou shalt not kill. It should be thou shalt not kill believers, I guess. And <laughs> And also the Ten Commandment about honoring thy mothers and fathers. There's also a passage in the Bible that says uh, you can't be a disciple of Jesus unless you hate your mother and father and your brother and sister. Right. So why do you have a commandment yeah. saying honor thy mother and father, but you can't be a, a disciple of uh, Jesus unless you hate your mother and father? I mean, there's just so many contradictions yeah, in there. It, if people yeah. just read the Bible, it, it makes no uh, they it, realize things like that. Those contradictions make no sense if the Bible is, in fact, you know, literally inspired, or, uh, literally inspired or dictated by some cosmic entity. But they make perfect sense if what the Bible is is a collection of little bits uh, cobbled together from over you know, hundreds and thousands of years of, of changes in the, this religion that it was documenting. You know, the author of the, uh, the Skeptic's Guide to the Bible, Ruth. Uh, I mean, I think I've just blown my brain cells or something. I can't think of any names today. That's but right. in any case, she said the Bible is the most purchased, least read book in the world. <laughs> <laughs> everyone buys one. Everyone has one. No one has read it. And they they have little bits of. It's like a collage of you know. I'll pick and choose from my little book here, and I'll make yeah. what I think is, you know, my view of the world. And yet, if they would read it in its entirety and examine it and look at it and think about it for just a moment. Yeah. They would see that it's really not all that great. But again, not that okay. we're picking on. Oh, go I'm on. sorry. All right, go on. I just wanted to mention a lot of people point out that there's something really wonderful about the Bible because it's the most bought book. I mean, <laughs> isn't it bought in bulk by churches and then given away to everybody? That's well, I think it's bought by like the hotel chains. They they uh, have yeah, money to have them in there. And from my understanding, uh, the Guinness Book of World Records is actually a more at uh, one time it was actually outsold the Bible. Oh, yeah. And. Uh, hmm. So it, uh, I don't know if that record still holds, but at one point, they actually sold more Guinness World Records. Well, you know, they're the guys that make that that write down what the records are. So that well, you'd have to have to take that claim with a, with a grain of salt. Uh, <laughs> Stephen Hawking's brief history of time comes in second. I think that's pretty cool. Does it? It does. Uh, cool. Excellent. Yeah, we'll have to do more research on that. Uh, anything else there, Mike? That's all I had. Thanks. Well, I appreciate your input. Bye bye. You have a great week. Now let's let's go on down to Adam. Kim. Yes. Um, I need to tell you something. You're oh, no. fucking bitch. Like day. you're stupid. Have a great week. Uh, let's go on down to Joel. Joel. Hello. Good morning. Uh, you shouldn't hang up on people, all right? I think he has his points to say, and well, no, I we, we, it's our show. Too. It's our show, and if we he's, don't feel like you're contributing to times. our show, uh, I don't and care we how like how many times I called in, oh, doesn't you, really matter. I mean, geez. Do you have something to say, sir? Yeah, he's trying to voice his opinion. And no, no, do you on. have something to say, sir? Hold on a minute, hold on. Okay. That's not cool, Cam. You know that, right? Yeah. All right, let's go on down to uh, Mike. Hey, those last guys, they weren't me, all right? This is the original Brett. Those guys weren't me. Okay. I'd like to clear that up for y'all. All right. Yeah. All right. Okay. Anything else? Ollie has um, behave. What? Anything behave? else? Behave. Those guys aren't with me. All right. They got a game. Do you have a Wait. point, sir? No, apparently not. Uh, 
No, I, I've, I've already hung up on him. You're See, not fooling no. anybody. Say again? I was just saying, they're not fooling anybody anymore. No. I don't know what's going on. Uh, is this our, our been... Mary? Hello. Yes. Hello, yeah. <laughs> yes. We have a sensible caller. I try to let the dialogue be free and not put in my two cents, but sometimes I just can't stop myself. <laughs> well, we need some idiot blockers anyway. So, yes. <laughs> That's what I was, I was sitting here waiting to, for you to answer my call, and I'm listening to all this intellectual pollution. <laughs> I mean, it really is polluting the dialogue. And I guess that that's how their ego expresses itself. But, you know, it gets to the point where we just don't have time for it anymore. We've got a life to live here. And it's not about head games. It's about reality. And I enjoy it most of the time. Uh, un until the intellectual pollution. Then I stop having fun. And I try not to be that way because... I'm working on my sense of humor. I know I'm much too serious, but sometimes <laughs> I get really pissed off, okay? Yes. But what I wanted to call about was um, sure. Bob Barr talking about the yeah. Wickham soldiers. I, my mind keeps going back to that. Listen, I've only got one thing to say about Bob Barr, and it, this is public record because of his speeches and stuff. He's right. a Ku Klux Klan sympathizer. Was he the guy who was hanging out with that that group that was like actually white supremacists uh -huh. pretending to be like average citizens? And then he says, oh, I just didn't know. Well, it's your intellectual uh -huh. job to do so, Mr. Barr, because you're getting the big box. Yeah. You know, that's irresponsible. And they want a, a podium for their opinions that's just as hard-earned as ours. You know, because we thought it out, we've, we've evaluated our experience, and I, for one, have faced up to my dark side. You know, I mean, I think that's the intellectual trial by fire, is when you can face up to your own fuck-ups. Excuse my language, but that's the only word I can think of for it. Okay. I'm sorry. Come on, Mary. I know we I have to cut you off if you use language like that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Will you please forgive me for it? <laughs> okay. <laughs> but okay, the second point I wanted to make was I was reading the New Yorker magazine, the summer fiction issue. Right. It's kind of fun every year. But in this one, and I think it was a summer fiction issue. I could be wrong, but it was in, in the New Yorker. Uh, they had a story about the red heifer. Have you heard about that? No. How Jerusalem, the city of Jerusalem, is uh, going to be the great seat of his kingdom's power, and he's going to live there and all that and that the sign of his coming is this red heifer and it's supposed to be a perfect red heifer it can't even have pale eyebrows or anything it's got to have reddish brown eyes and all that and so now they want it to happen so they bought uh, a cattle farm and they're trying to raise red they're trying heifer. to breathe <laughs> who's doing this okay but the end of the article the important part of the end of the article was um there's somebody at the door is uh that the <laughs> ultimate thing about it is that they're trying to buy God. Yes, they're they are. Yeah, it's just nuts. Just like those lunatics that were over there that were going to cause, like, street violence like so, to, so that they could spark World War III. Prophecy, but, you know, what is on. wrong with these people? Yeah, just a second. Uh, somebody <laughs> at the door. I'm sorry, I had to own... But that's the whole fear thing, and uh, I just, it makes me ill now, okay? It's starting to where it makes me sick, and I can't even go out in public because of all the hostility, the millennial fever, everybody's getting crazy, yes, and they're yeah. going to start killing and all that. And it's such a crock. It is. I mean, totally, we are wasting our time having to listen to that stupid over and over debate. They say the same things over and over, basically. Yeah, and by the way, folks, the millennium, the, in fact, uh, biblical scholars year. know this, the the uh, the calendar is off by at least four years. The millennium was at least four years ago. Uh -huh. If you really care about two thousand years since the birth of Christ, that was four years ago, kids. Yeah, but we let them define all the rules. You know, it's their millennium. It's their timing system. Those are people calling you on your show, t trying to define the dialogue how you should do it, and it's like your show, right? Yeah, okay, yeah. it's about what you're. <laughs> Somebody's bothering me. Somebody's at the door knocking, and, and uh, the person who's responsible for it won't Jehovah's answer the door. Jehovah's Witness. <laughs> Jehovah's Witness? Yeah, why don't you go take care of that, Mary, and call us back. <laughs> Listen, I'll talk to you guys later, okay? Okay. Bye. Bye. Thanks for calling. I think all right-thinking people in this country are sick and tired of being told that ordinary, decent people are fed up in this country with being sick and tired. <laughs> I'm certainly not. Well, I'm sick and tired of being told that I am. <laughs> 
mail, I got this real big, colorful, fold-out Christian poster about the end of the world in the year 2000. Uh -huh. And it says, Christianity brings hope for you, and you open it up and see Earth blowing up. <laughs> on the other, side, on the other side, it's zoomed in on the chunks of the Earth flying apart, and there's three-headed cheetahs with wings and winged lions and stoned giants. They're getting around. really, really, really nervous Where do they because they're thing? running out of time. Huh? What was that? Uh, I was just saying, where do they come up with this? A three-headed cheetahs? I, th uh, these, these people are getting really nervous. So they realize that they're running out of time. Then in about five years, everybody's going to look back and go, you know, that was really a load of nonsense. Yeah. And, they're, and all their silly little religious groups are going to have to backpedal like mad and, you know, and explain why they, all their predictions were wrong and why the 2,000 years after Jesus was not significant and they're going to dwindle down to little cults like the previous millennial cults did. I so, don't know. I mean, we, if they just get get over it now, it would be a lot less embarrassing for everyone. <laughs> but, I mean, you know, in every century they say it's the end, and then it keeps going on. That's right. I mean, it keeps going. You know, they don't even wait for centuries. Like every couple of years, there's some group or another saying the end is near. Well, Pat Robertson, who used to say the end would be in the year 2000, of course, before the year 2000 comes, which I guess because he knows he's wrong. Yeah. He now predicts that it's going to be the year 3000. So you got <laughs> to nice. you buy his book to prepare for it. Yeah, because he <laughs> <laughs> I think you might want to take my advice and invest in life extension before, <laughs> before you worry about what's going to happen in the year 3000. All right, let's go on down to uh, Jason. Yeah, speaking. Good morning. Uh, yeah, I got a couple of questions. Um, sure. being, being that you guys are atheists, does uh -huh. that mean that um, you guys don't pray at all? No. That's correct. <laughs> I don't okay, pray. You, you don't pray at all? I meditate and a little. You meditate? I meditate a little, merely for relaxation purposes. I don't think there's a there's any supernatural anything connected to it. It's just relaxation. Okay. And my next question is, if, just hypothetically, sure. not saying that this ever happened, but if something was to happen like car wreck or disease or something hit your family, do, do you pray or what do you do to... Um, you know, get that, that strength to go on. I was in a car wreck in uh, 1990, quite severe, um, major surgery in the hospital for 10 days, okay. and found no use in praying whatsoever. Did not have my family standing there praying, did not have, you know, ministers come in and praying with me. Okay. And this was at a, a point in my life where I was really starting to um, question my beliefs, so and it might the questioning started before the accident and had the accident and you've got you know 10 days of time just twiddling your thumbs while you're recovering in the hospital and not yeah. once did it cross my mind to um, pray okay first you know I mean I I lived that was that was great I was very happy but was I supposed to thank someone because I was alive other than my surgeon you know I what atheists not how I dealt with it what atheists do in those situations sir is we deal we deal with it Okay, and and with um, I mean, you said that uh, should you thank someone because you're alive, but when you were babies, you had someone to nurture you and bring you up, right? Are we babies now? I'm, no, no, I'm just saying when you were babies. Yeah. Right? Your mothers and your fathers nurtured you. Sure. And, and taught and you before you were able to sure. think for yourself. And our mothers and fathers existed. That helps. Right, right, right. but as a baby, just yeah. think, just think with me for a minute. As a baby. <clears throat> children start to pick up on things at age three, right? Our that's, center, that's, that's, yeah. that's scientific. Okay. I mean, if you, want, if you really want to get we'll, down we'll, to we'll it. We'll quibble. Go ahead. Okay. And and most most babies, most kids or whatever, they, you know, whether we believe it or not, they have a faith that their parents are going to take care of them. Uh, they have, in fact, years of experience of their parents physically existing and really taking care of them. There's a big difference between... Right. Between, you know. between concluding that these beings that you know exist and right. that you have had taking care of you for years are really there and you can count on them, uh -huh. and leaping to the conclusion that some supernatural cosmic being that you can't see, that you got no e evidence of, and, uh, and it, you know that that being is going to take care of you, particularly when you're in a car wreck, because any, any uh, uh, omnipotent, omniscient being mm -hmm. that really cares about you would have stopped the accident from happening in the first place. Well, some things are unexplainable. 
It's, it's, no, no, it's, no, it's no, divine. wait a minute. I mean, you, it's, it really is divine. I mean... No, wait a okay, minute. Now, instance, wait a second. Okay, wait, Just wait. because... No, okay. d d you can't say some things are unexplainable, therefore we got to believe in the Bible. So you believe There more. are all kinds of things that are unexplainable, and the thing to do is... is is, is not worry about those things uh -huh. until you, there's some reason to. Okay. When you got some way to explain it, then you explain it. If you, so, if, if, if in fact God is not understandable, why is there this big fat holy book all about no, him? It's, it's not that he's not understandable. It's just that a lot of things that are created in this world, a lot of things that are done in this world, are not explainable. There, it's, Who it's, says? It's, it's, it's divine. I mean, we're not. We're not supernatural. You you do believe that, right? I mean, I do don't you, believe anything supernatural. Okay, and do you believe that you have a co higher consciousness than that book that you just pulled up? A higher consciousness. You mean can I think and it can't? Yes. Okay. So so in in essence, do you do you believe like more in science? Scientology than, I mean, and <laughs> Whoa, 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 there's a big difference between science and Scientology. Scientology well, well, is a well, crackpot religion, and science is a, a, a system, systematic way of finding out facts about the universe. Right, right. So if you can't reason it, or if you can't have a solution for it or whatever, yeah. then you don't believe it. That's what I'm asking. Right. That, so that's that's more. I do of not a, believe no, in things for which there is no evidence. That's correct. Okay, so that's, that's more mean, of on the level of um, believing more in the science. More and more in science. I rely on science because science is more. science finds out stuff that you can prove is actually true. So that means that um, I I anything that science can be proven over and over again, you know that, right? Excuse me. I'm anything sorry. in science, if if if, if it's if it's scientific, yeah, it's repeatable. Uh, yeah, it's repeatable. It is reliable. Repeat it. There is, of right. course, always since we are not omniscient, there is always a slim chance that there's stuff we didn't know that we don't know about yet. Sure. Right. So the thing that I, okay. that I guess the point that I'm getting at, you know, there's a lot of people who believe in the theory of evolution, which is is, is, is based on science. So where where is the middle ground whereas there are some people, you know, through this um, theory of evolution, where's the middle ground where those people who are still have those um ape like characteristics? Where where's the, the evidence of that? We're all interbreeding. So you don't understand evolution. Uh, if if you if we had some continent somewhere where there were human beings who, had, who were so far away from everything that there couldn't be any interaction between the different branches of humanity, mm -hmm. then we might get different species. Okay. okay, but we don't have that. The planet's not that big. We had boats. The human beings traveled all over the place, uh -huh. uh, and the, mo the and the closest thing we have to that are races. We do have different branches of humanity that are not identical, that have racial characteristics that are unique to them, mm -hmm. because we did have b big groups of humans that didn't interact with the other humans that much. Right. Oh, okay. All right. Well, thank you. Okay. Right. You have a great week. You uh, That reminded me of a, a most interesting news article. Uh, and we'll, we'll Did I do that. news? We're uh, still, this yeah, we got still ringing, but I'd like to do these if okay. I possibly could. Well, let's okay. see what, Stephanie? Yeah. Good morning. Good morning. I just wanted to call and let y'all know that y'all are doing a really great job and keep up the good work. Thank you. Well, thank, thank you. Thank you. I, I, I appreciate the fact you hunt, you stayed on hold all that time <laughs> just to say that. <laughs> and, uh, we'd like to come on down to the bagel shop and meet us in person. We, we're down there as soon as the show's over. We're run, we run right over there. It's down there at West 5th and Lavaca. And somebody cut her off. I didn't. It's free parking, too, by the way. It is free parking. I did. I, but... Well, it's Sunday. The, Everything's free. It's the free one way Sunday, is making it. And uh, what the one particular news article you wanted to do? Uh, I I wanted to comment on um, the uh, President Clinton's speech sure. to the people of Littleton, Colorado. I don't know if anybody else caught this, but it was all Just over TV. Bites. You did. It's all sound bites of it. Yeah. Um, uh, his his big theme for his speech was uh, that he's so impressed by the way the people have, of Littleton have managed to hold on to their faith, and he quoted the uh, the uh, looking through a glass darkly verse, um, and uh, and 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 said you know here's there's stuff that we can't explain but we've got to hold on to our faith anyway. Well. Um, that, I mean, apart from the fact that, you know, separation of church and state and stuff, that's okay. I mean, he's a human being. He gets to, he gets to say what he believes. But what I interested me was the way he wrapped up his speech, which uh, was by relating a story that he heard from Nelson Mandela, the, uh, the, the, uh, the leader of South Africa, from when Nelson Mandela was in prison. 
And Clinton said, oh, that must have been horrible. How did you, how did you deal with that? And Nelson Mandela talked about how the, his captors had taken everything away from him, but he realized that his captors could not take away his mind or his heart. And the, so he knew he had something that he could hold on to, and that made it possible for him to, to, to bear that imprisonment. But the thing about faith is when you decide that you're going to believe in something for emotional reasons, not because there's any evidence to support it, that's giving away your heart and your mind. That is exactly the opposite of the theme of his speech. You don't hold on to your mind by believing in stuff with no evidence. That's shutting down your mind and saying, I'm going to believe anyway. And you don't hold on to your heart by, uh, by embracing, for emotional reasons, stuff that may well not even actually exist. That's giving your heart away for nothing. So uh, I, I was really very... I was really very annoyed <laughs> by the whole thing, and I just wanted to to to, to bring that up. Yeah. And and good, we got even more calls now. Well, the, helped. the news article that I was reminded that he was talking, uh, he sounded like he was asking us about where the missing link was on that the human rights that question was the caller we just got done talking about. Okay, and uh, they were talking about uh, oh. <clears throat> the uh, the human genome project that's going on right now that we're mapping out all the genes here, we and uh, cloning and everything else. This, uh, this author was talking about, we actually have the capability, and we're on the verge of having the capability. We don't have it yet. We're on the verge of the capability where we can do the genetic engineering to where we can actually have a human being that looks like a human being, comes up with a human, but it's so different that they would unable to be able to breed with another human. Sure. And, uh, and before we even be able to clone, we can actually do the genetic engineering to do that. And that would actually be a whole other species if they were unable to... Uh, breed with a human, they would actually be a whole other species. And we're uh, on the verge of that in just a matter of a, a year or two, the way this author was talking. Interesting. And, uh, I, I thought that was that. quite fascinating myself. Uh, we're, we're down to like seven minutes, so let's try to do this quickly. Let's go to Al. Good morning. Good morning. Hey, uh, uh, I like your point about Scientology. I, I, <laughs> I went, to, went to that for about two, three, three months or so. Ooh. I thought it was rather interesting that the Scientologists uh, have restrictions on the people. I, I, volun I was a volunteer member of them, and I worked in the communications. And it was interesting to me that they're, they have a restriction that if you've ever done Ritalin or if you've ever done LSD, and these are the only two drugs that they, they chose, hmm. that you could not participate as, as a communications member. But you could do other things in the group besides you, that? Yeah, you could do other things in the group, and I guess okay. it's because uh, the communications members were uh, responsible for directing emails from from Flag, which is their uh, their ship. They have a, a a ship. I don't know if it's as big as Queen Mary or, or whatever, but it's a pretty big ship that they their organization is based on. Right, and it's out of sea. Right, and uh, supposedly, if they you know when. When there's a nuclear war, all the people who've paid enough dues will will get on the the uh, ship and survive the nuclear war. Uh -huh. You know that that and and the lower members can drink uh, a cup of oil uh, a day and uh, sit in sweat lodges and and all the radiation will will be expelled from them. Uh -huh. They're but, actually. So they're deeply kooky, is what you're saying. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's, uh, that's what you're saying. Uh, I'll let you draw the conclusions there. I, I, I don't think it takes a rocket scientist to draw that co conclusion. Yeah. And I'd like to point out that these these kooks also uh, reject the theory of evolution. Uh, well, I don't. I, they have well, they have those I, TV I ads. That. They have TV ads that slam evolution. <laughs> oh, do they? It's not an animal. But uh, uh, in reference to that point about the. Uh, uh, the uh, why why do we not have uh, humans or, or animals that are like humans that can't breed with humans? We do. The uh, uh, you know some of the other primates uh, are are quite similar to humans. They, exactly. they have, yeah, they, I don't know if we can make babies with them, though. <laughs> and I, and well, I don't, that's, that's I don't recommend point. that anybody try. <laughs> that's the point, is that we can't. And because of that, their, their evolutionary path has, has been uh, 
separated from from our right. evolutionary path. Right. And and all the other races are not, so they are not as much different because uh, you know at points in history there's probably been been in inbreeding you know at a core uh, a more core level mm -hmm. uh, yeah. but let me ask you this yeah quickly uh, I'm running out quickly time. Uh, it, it, I'm, I know a lot of religions are, are part of the problem in in the war on drugs per, perpetuating uh, uh, stuff that is not from the Bible but just just from uh, political you know hysteria Right. And uh, I was I was wondering if if atheists ever, uh, you know, take a stand or or I guess would that be an individual thing? And would anyone like to comment on that? And uh, yeah, we, and, we'll, and we're, I'm gonna go ahead and catch you off there while we take our answers there. Yeah, we you have, have a great week here. Yeah. We have atheists in the group who consider the uh, um, uh, legalization of drugs to be an important. Uh, social movement that they are part of. I don't personally. Uh, that's not an issue for me. But but you know you and have as many different opinions on that kind of stuff as you have atheists. And 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 they bring up the point too that the, they do the religious right is a strong advocate for the drug war. So they they feel that there's some connection there. But like Jeff said, not everyone in the group uh, goes along with that. And uh, I, I myself uh, vote libertarian. Uh, I like the libertarian point of view on that, so uh, that's my point of view. Kim, you want to add anything to that? Oh, I, I right. basically um, vote independent. Okay. Okay. Thanks. It was just, it was just running out of time, and I wanted to make sure I can get you your Thank input you. into the show. Here. Yes. <laughs> yeah, two minutes. All right. Let's go to Carl. Yeah. Good morning. All right. Good morning to you. Uh, just real quickly. Uh, yeah, we're running out of time. Turn your TV down. I, I don't have it on. Oh, okay. It's weird. We're getting feedback. feedback for some <laughs> no, I just uh, want to say that I was uh, I was raised Christian, Presbyterian parents, but they did something very shocking when I was about 10 or 11. My father just said one morning, you don't have to go to church if you don't want to anymore. And so I thought, okay. So I never did. Um, I guess <laughs> I'm agnostic. I'm pretty comfortable with that. I have been for years. I've kind of leaned more towards your point of view. But uh, I still don't know. I haven't been given the mental capacity to know either way. So, But I'm, I'm comfortable with being agnostic so far. Uh, one more thing about the guy you hung up on, or the two guys. I think that was great. They can forward their call to Jerry Springer show and bitch and moan all they want. <laughs> and one more thing sure. uh, with Christians, uh, they tend to one, they can't mind their own business, and two, they talk too much and they don't say anything. So they can weed their own garden and take care of their own backyard and just mind their own business. I hope we return to those days one day. And keep the show going. I enjoy it. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Thanks for calling. And, uh, and thanks for keeping that short. Are we going yeah, to wrap all, it up ourselves? Yeah, we're going to remind all the callers there. Uh, uh, that was our voicemail, 371 uh, 2911. If you didn't get through and like to have a question for us, feel free to call that. Did we determine whether we have a show next week? Uh, Did we find that out? There's a possibility we might be taped next if week. If there are five Sundays in a month, on the fifth one, we don't have a show. But we should be running a tape instead. All right. uh, so, so so tune in and see an old episode, and we'll be back then on uh, the the Sunday after that. Uh, Kim, would you like to close out with anything there? I just want to thank you for.